Before you watch this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to Social Media Management TV and do not forget to press the notification button and to get more information. Hi and welcome back to Asian News and here is the news for today. China provides 700 million doses of vaccine to other countries to prevent pandemic. Chinese Foreign Ministry spokesman Zhao Lizian says China provides over 700 million doses of COVID-19 vaccines to other countries to help battle against the epidemic and save lives. Zhao makes the remarks during a press conference in Beijing, responding to a comment on the view that China is using its vaccine assistance to engage in vaccine diplomacy. Since the beginning of this year, China has done its best to provide more than 700 million doses of vaccines to the world, especially developing countries, guided by the vision of building a community with a shared future for mankind. China's actions have delivered much-needed help to countries and helped more than 100 countries save lives and fight the epidemic with no political strings attached. He adds other countries should focus on making contributions to the global fight against the epidemic instead of smearing China's efforts. Those who accuse and discredit China should first ask themselves what they have done for the world. They should stop lying diplomacy and smearing diplomacy and focus on doing something for the world's fights against COVID-19. Catholic Church changes pastoral center to an isolation ward to help COVID-19 patients. The Catholic Church has converted a pastoral center in Jakarta into an isolation ward to care for COVID-19 patients in the Indonesian capital as it battles a devastating second wave of the pandemic that has overrun hospitals. A Catholic priest in charge of the facility, Father Justinus Arianto, says nearly 90 nuns, priests and other carers are looking after around 60 patients in the Samadhi Center. For me, the healing process is not just about medicine, but also a comfortable environment. A lot of the patients ask me how much they have to pay for the facility, and I tell them not to think about it, and just to recover. Just come here first, no need to pay, and I won't oust you out. Encircling a central garden have 75 rooms at Samadhi with most of the patients suffering milder COVID-19 symptoms and if their health deteriorate, they can be transferred to a hospital and around 70 people has been treated and returned home. The activities are funded by the Archdiocese of Jakarta and donations accept people of any religion in a country which is predominantly Muslim but has large Christian, Hindu, Buddhist and other religious minorities. We accept patients here as long as, first, there are rooms available, and secondly, if their condition is still possible to treat. Hospitals, particularly on the island of Java and Bali, have been flooded with patients during the past month as COVID-19 infections rates and deaths have been driven to record tight by the highly infectious Delta variant. Florentino Suharni Chaturwati, a teacher and isolating patient at Samadhi says authorities should try and find more similar facilities to use as isolation wards during the pandemic. My suggestion for the government is to consider turning some facilities, such as dorms for instance, into isolation facilities for COVID-19 patients. 
Some people out there are having problems self-isolating as they have family members living in the same house with them and don't have spare rooms to use. Keluarga besar lalu tidak punya fasilitas memadai di rumah dengan misalnya kamar mandi yang lebih dari satu misalnya seperti itu. Meanwhile, Father Justinus says the staff running Samari knew of the dangers of getting infected themselves. Indonesia records more than 270 million people currently has Southeast Asia's biggest virus caseload. It has reported more than 3.1 million infections and 83,000 deaths. Philippines holds protests against Duterte over his handling on coronavirus pandemic. Over a thousand Filipino activists take to the streets of Manila ahead of Philippine President Rodrigo Duterte's sixth and final nation address. The protesters parade a variety of banners condemning Duterte's policies such as the alleged mishandling of the coronavirus pandemic in the country as well as human rights violations. How Duterte handled this pandemic is one of the worst failures this regime has done since it took power. We had the longest lockdown, our economic took one of the worst downfalls, our schools have been closed for the longest, and we are one of the worst country when it comes to the vaccination rate of our population. At isa tayo sa pinakakulela, pinakahuli pagdating sa pagbabakuna ng populasyon. While one protester says they still have hope in the past government, but they will only achieve if there is justice. Sa parating na election, dahil na rin po sa marami ng dumaan. In this coming election, and because of the other past administration, I still want to be hopeful. I still want to feel that there is hope, but we will only achieve that if there is justice. His administration should be held responsible for all the wrongdoing to his people. Nagdaang administrasyon sa kanya nga mga pagkakasala sa taong bayan. Duterte, whose single six-year term ends in June next year, expects to talk about the country's development programs, foreign policy, security and peace, and the government's pandemic response. According to the Health Ministry, that there have been 1,566,667 confirmed cases of COVID-19 and with 27,401 deaths. At least six Rohingya Muslims and other children died in landslides and floods in Rohingya camps in Bangladesh. Heavy monsoon rains trigger landslides and flooding in refugee camps in southern Bangladesh. Officials say six Rohingya Muslims of Myanmar, including children, are killed and several others injured after heavy rain monsoon rains triggered landslides and flooding in refugee camps in southern Bangladesh. Video footage shows the damage and destruction in parts of the Kutapalon refugee camp with people searching for their belongings after the landslide. Onovan Manen, country director of Save the Children Bangladesh, says two children are killed after a rain-soaked hill collapsed on the top of their shelter, burying them underneath. Nearly one million Rohingya live in crowded camps in the border district of Cox Bazar, the world's largest refugee settlement after fleeing a military crackdown in neighboring Myanmar in 2017. Rohingya refugees mostly live in shacks made of bamboo and plastic sheets that cling to steep bare hills and flooding is further worse than their living conditions. The Bangladesh Weather Office says it expected heavy rains to continue for the next few days. Great Britain representative warns that COVID-19 could infect half of Myanmar in the next two weeks. Britain's United Nations ambassador warns that half of Myanmar's 54 million people could be infected with COVID-19 in the next two weeks, as Myanmar's envoy called for United Nations monitors to ensure an effective delivery of vaccines.
The COVID situation is of particular concern. Uh, the coup has resulted in a near total collapse of the healthcare system and healthcare workers are being attacked and arrested. The virus is spreading uh, through the population very fast indeed. By some estimates, in the next two weeks, half of the population of Myanmar could be infected with COVID. Yeah. Myanmar has been in chaos since the military ousted an elected government led by Aung San Suu Kyi on February 1st with protests and fighting between the army and newly formed militias. The United States, Britain and others have imposed sanctions on the military rulers over the coup and repression of the pro-democracy protest in which hundreds have been killed. Myanmar state media reports that the military ruler is looking for greater cooperation with other countries to contain the coronavirus. According to the health ministry data cited in media, infections in the Southeast Asian country have surged since June with 4,980 cases and 365 deaths. Medics and funeral services put the toll much higher. According to the Reuters tracker, Myanmar recently received 2 million more Chinese vaccines, but it was believed to have only vaccinated 3.2% of its population. Protesters call for government cancellation of the Olympics because coronavirus cases are soaring in the country. <laughs> Dozens of protesters stage a rally in front of the Japanese Prime Minister's office in Tokyo, calling for the country's leader to cancel the ongoing Olympics due to a recent spike of coronavirus cases. It is contradictory to host the Olympics and try to prevent COVID-19 infections. I think the right thing for the government to do is to cancel the Olympics and allocate all energy and budget to control COVID-19, said 55-year-old rally organizer Koji Sugihara. In Tokyo, where pandemic restrictions are mostly voluntary outside the Olympic bubble, daily infections hit a record 3,865. Domestic media says daily cases nationwide topped 10,000 for the first time. The broadcaster NHK says the government was set to declare a state of emergency in four prefectures outside of Tokyo and extend current ones in Tokyo and Okinawa until the end of August. On the same day, American double world champion Paul Volter, Sam Kendricks, and rival German Charavillo of Argentina were ruled out of the Olympics after testing positive for COVID-19, sending a chill through the games as infection spikes again in the host city. South Korea reports high COVID-19 daily infection in fourth wave that dominated by Delta variant. South Korea reports 1,896 new COVID-19 cases, its highest ever daily increase as the country struggles to subdue a fourth wave of outbreaks fanned by the more contagious Delta variant of the coronavirus. The Daily Tally broke a previous record set on July 22nd as infections are spreading beyond the capital Seoul and its neighboring regions where the toughest social distancing rules are in place. Tighter social distancing curbs take effect across most of the country and will last for two weeks. Those areas will be under level 3 curbs on a four-level scale which will mean a 10 p.m. dining curfew and ban on gatherings of more than four people. The Great Seoul area region remains under level 4 curbs that include a ban on gatherings of more than two people after 6 p.m. Xi Jinping sent a congratulatory message to Nguyen Xuân Phuc on his re-election as president of the state of Vietnam.
In his message, she points out that China and Vietnam are socialist neighbors linked by mountains and rivers and enjoy profound traditional friendship and extensive common interest. The world today is undergoing profound changes unseen in this century and facing the COVID-19 pandemic. She stresses that two sides have adhered to common ideals and beliefs, lived up to the original aspiration of unity and friendship, and taken concrete actions to add new connotation to the comprehensive strategic cooperation between the two countries. The Chinese president expresses willingness to work with the Vietnamese side to strengthen strategic guidance for bilateral relations between the two parties and the two countries in the new era and may continue progress toward the goal of building a China-Vietnam community with a shared future and bears strategic significance. On the same day, Chinese Premier Le Qixiang also sent a congratulatory message to Pang Minchin on his re-election as Vietnamese Prime Minister. Li stands ready to work with Vietnamese counterpart to enhance political mutual trust, consolidate the foundation of friendly cooperation, accelerate the synergy of development strategies, build a mutually beneficial cooperation paradigm, so as to continuously push forward China-Vietnam relations to forge ahead. Elderly people in Thailand queuing for vaccination after vaccine shortage in this country. Thousands of people from high-risk groups queue to be vaccinated at Bangkok's Bang Sui Grand Station during an inoculation drive that comes amid vaccine shortages in Thailand. People over the age 60, pregnant women, and those over 100 kilograms are among the people considered to be in high-risk groups. Elderly people have been prioritized for vaccination since July 12, although the priority window is set to close. Government data shows that government has faced public criticism over vaccine procurement, with only 5.6 of the population fully inoculated so far, and 18.64% having received at least one dose. Last week, authorities imposed tighter lockdown measures in the capital Bangkok and 12 high-risk provinces suspending most domestic flights and expanding a curfew area. Thailand reports a record number of 15,376 coronavirus cases as the virulent Delta variant curved a deadly path through Southeast Asia and now has become a global epicenter for the virus. It's the second consecutive day of record cases in the nation of more than 66 million people. Vietnam reports high coronavirus cases and needed more vaccine. Vietnam's Health Ministry reports 7,968 coronavirus infections, a record daily increase, take a total record of 7,307. In statement, the ministry says more than two-thirds of cases are in Ho Chi Minh City. After successfully containing the virus for much of the pandemic, the Southeast Asian country has been facing a renewed outbreak of the virus, with southern business hub Ho Chi Minh City and surrounding provinces accounting for most new infections. The ministry says it will extend a lockdown in the city and impose stricter restrictions measures in the capital Hanoi. The measures include a stay-home order, a ban on gatherings larger than two people, and the suspension of public transport. The capital city also suspends motorbike delivery services, including by companies such as ride-hailing firms Grab and Gojek, adding to its existing restriction measures. The foreign ministry says Vietnam is also talks with the United States on domestic production of mRNA vaccines, adding that production could begin in the fourth quarter or early in 2022. The country records nearly 95,000 infections and at least 370 deaths, most in the southern commercial hub of Ho Chi Minh City. Well, that's all the news for today. Please do follow the health protocol measures. Stay safe, stay healthy and have a nice weekend.